So for a long time, I didn't go to Israel. I just couldn't because my first memory was always running to my Safta's house and going to the Makolet and spending time in Ramat Gan with my Safta. And after she passed, I just, it didn't feel right going to Israel and her not being there. But the memory that I do have that really stands out when I was living in Israel and going to Yeshiva, I brought a bunch of my friends to her house. And Friday night, late into the night, we were singing Shabbat songs and she was on the couch and she was just crying. And I was thinking, you know, she was born and raised in Addis Ababa in Ethiopia, but she was Yemenite and she married my Saba who's Yemenite. And for thousands of years, Jews have lived in Yemen since the first temple, in between the first and second temple, the Beit HaMikdash. And they had lived there up until the last, you know, 20, 30 years. And my family had moved to Israel in 1927. And thinking of these thousands of years of exile and dreaming to be back in the homeland and her realizing that dream in her own life, I just couldn't imagine what she was thinking. She used to get up every morning at 5.30 in the morning to, to daven to Hashem. And she was so connected and just her seeing the one grandson singing these songs still and davening and learning in yeshiva, she was probably just in another world when that had happened. In this parasha, now we're in the book of Vayikra. This is the third book in the Light of Infinite series, The Sound of Illumination. And we read this week, when one among you offers a sacrifice to God. And King David in Tehillim, he writes, for you, God, do not desire sacrifices, else I would give it. You do not delight in burnt offering. The sacrifice of God is a broken spirit, a broken and contrite heart, O God, you will not despise. So we're learning about the korbanot, the sacrifices. Korban is connected to the word karov or likarev, to come closer. And it's in this way, in the temple sacrifices, that we would come close to God. And in these korbanot, in, in these sacrifices, God always said, the person whose heart compels them. And now, after the destruction of the temple, the korbanot are the prayers. So now, what King David is saying is it's the broken spirit. It's the heart that brings you closer to Hashem. It's when you do something that's completely connected. Lead kareb. That's when you can come closer to Hashem in tshuva, which means to return. And the Zohar teaches that the service of the Kohanim, the high priests, was in silence with the devotion of the heart, signifying hamshacha, which is drawing forth from above. While the service of the Leviim, the Levites, was with song and music, signifying hala'a, sublimation, elevating from below upwards. As it's written, the Kohanim in their silent service and their desire drew God's presence downward. And the Levites in their songs and praises drew the human soul and sacrifice upward. This is mirrored in how we tend to the sanctuaries within our own soul. The inner acts of sacrifice we practice each day. The desire we have to bring holiness down from above and the artfulness we use to draw our spirits and surroundings upwards. So remember, connect to the heart and connect it back to its source. And that's when the korban turns to le karev, to kiruv, to getting closer, to bring closer. And shuva happens and that tshuva is that return and we can return back to our source and feel unified and feel that oneness and feel whole. Shabbat shalom.